welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called The Mighty Shadow, an adaptation of a Greek folktale written for you by Daniel Hines. Thanks! Enjoy the episode! The Mighty Shadow Once upon a time, there was a skinny little wolf named Scout. He still looked like a puppy, even though he was fully grown with little paws and little ears and a little muzzle full of little teeth. The only thing that wasn't little on Scout was his attitude. He always thought he should be in charge of things, and he'd try and boss around anyone who came too close, from the fish in their ponds to the birds in their trees to the rabbits in their holes. Of course, since Scout was so small, no one listened much. Hey you, Pipsqueak! he barked at a passing turtle. You better hurry it up before I take a bite out of that shell. The turtle just kept walking, slowly, one foot in front of the other, back and forth, slow, slow, slow. Finally, after a full minute of teetering and tottering, he made it out of little Scout's path. That's right, roughed Scout. You better keep walking. And that's pretty much how it always went. Scout never got the respect he felt like he deserved. Other wolves were fierce leaders, controlling roving packs or hunters. Scout was fierce, but he was no leader. He didn't understand that leaders should be more than the biggest and the baddest. They had to understand the ones they were leading and care about their problems. Scout wanted to be the biggest and the baddest, But he didn't much care about other animals, except to bully them when they happened by. The true leader of the forest was the Lion Queen. She was big, she was bad, but she was also kind and fair. And all the animals lived under her watchful eye. She held court atop the sprawling branches of a fig tree, high in the middle of a grassy clearing. The air around her smelled of sweet fruit and her fine golden fleece shone brighter than any crown. One day, when the little wolf was being especially bothersome, the queen sent some monkeys to summon him to her tree. The monkeys ran chittering into the forest and found Scout bossing around some rabbits. That's right, he was saying. Hide in your holes. I'm the big man. I'm the boss, you cotton-tailed twerps. Hey, hey, hey said the monkeys, hanging down from the trees. The queen wants to see you! The little wolf sauntered over, holding his teeny muzzle high in the air. He looked at the monkeys like they were beneath him, even though they hung above, which was a little hard on his eyes, but still, he pulled it off. The queen wants to see me? Of course she does, Scout said. I'm basically the king of this place. Does she want to offer me a place on the throne? Step down and let a real ruler take charge? The monkeys laughed, their chattering bouncing their branches. <laughs> sure, maybe that's it, they said, rolling their eyes at one another. You better go see and find out. The wolf nodded and sniffed. Well, I'll go see the queen when I'm good and ready, he said, turning back to his berating of the rabbits. The monkeys sighed and settled in to wait. Scout arrived to the queen hours late, strutting proudly and snapping at the monkeys who chattered around him. Hey there, queen. You wanted to chat with the big dog? He said, sitting in front of the fig tree throne. Well, here I am. Better make it snappy. The lioness sat up on her branch, a giant predator of liquid gold. Her voice was regal. Her tail swayed hypnotically like a cobra, and her eyes were deep pools of amber quicksand. Scout, she said, eyeing the little wolf curiously. I hear you've been causing a lot of trouble in our forest, trying to boss everyone around. Scout started to reply, but just then, the queen rose to her feet and prowled forward along the branch. She was even larger than he had thought, towering over him each of her killer paws bigger than Scout's whole chest. 
The little wolf's snarky reply withered on his tongue when he looked at the queen's enormity. Well, uh, sorry, queen, he said meekly. I was just joking around. I didn't mean anything by it. Just saying those words drove Scout crazy. He knew he was meant to be the biggest and the baddest. He knew that everyone was meant to do what he said. But in that moment, he just felt so small. He hated it. I understand it can be hard to feel small, the queen continued. But you can't take that out on those around you. You're small for a wolf, but you're still fast and cunning and bold. You have your part to play in the forest, and I think you'd be happier if you listened more and gave orders less. The kindness and the honesty of the queen's words stung Scout worse than any bite would have. It was one thing not to be the biggest, but this felt like pity. It made him feel smaller than ever and angrier than ever, too. I'm not small, he said, unable to help himself, no matter how big the queen was. I'm a great big bad wolf, and I'm meant to lead this forest. Everyone will bow to me. The lioness shook her head and leapt nimbly from the tree, hitting the ground in front of Scout with an earth-shaking thud. This close, she seemed bigger than ever. Any ruler who needs others to bow to them isn't worthy of ruling, she purred dangerously. A good queen puts the animals first, not themselves. the way through both the best and the worst and a good leader doesn't need accolade and sets an example Bossing others around, give it a rest. That's not the way of the crown. We're all in this together. It's community. You have a role to play, an opportunity. Be kind to others, both big and small. You're so big, snarled Scout. You're just a bully. No, little pup, the queen said, stalking forward. I'm here to protect against bullies. She leaned in close, showing off her large yellowed teeth in a dangerous smile. Bullies like you, she said. Now run on home and think about how you've been acting. Telling me to run home? You telling me to run home? You're telling me? Go! The queen roared, and the little wolf stumbled backward in surprise. He popped up and darted away, his fear finally winning out over his attitude. That didn't last long, though. As soon as he was out of earshot and on the long trail back to his den, he started mouthing off again. Lion queen, ha! More like lying around all day, queen. What?
that makes her such a good ruler. Because she treats everyone fair. Pathetic. I'd show these wimps who's boss. If only I were bigger, they'd all have to bow to me. Scout complained and walked down the lonely trail to home. It was a well-traveled trail, without many trees, so he could feel the afternoon sun warming his fur, his shadow trotting beside him. As he went along, though, the little wolf noticed something strange happening. With every step he took, his shadow seemed to get a little bigger, longer, and fuller. In Scout's angry mind, he started to think he was growing. Looking at his shadow, he thought he had nearly doubled in size. Now who's big? He said to himself, looking at his shadow stretching off into the grass. I should go show that queen a thing or two about being the boss. He decided to wait for a little bit, just to make sure he wasn't imagining it. After another few minutes, his shadow was even bigger, stretching across the trail and nearly to the trees. Ha! I finally grew! He said, spinning around. Now back to the queen! Scout whirled and marched back towards the fig tree and the lioness. Of course, he wasn't actually growing. The sun was setting lower in the sky, making shadows longer. Maybe the little wolf would have realized that, if he had stopped to think about anything but himself. But he didn't, and poor Scout was as small as ever. Unfortunately, his attitude was now as big as his shadow. Listen up, you mangy feline, he shouted as he stomped into the queen's clearing. It's time for your peaceful paws to hang it up. We got a big dog in charge now. The queen prowled forward, eyes gleaming out from the shadows of her fig tree. I see you thought of nothing, she said. I see you've changed nothing. You're more of a bully than ever. It's not being a bully when you're the biggest, Scout said. Then it's just being the king. It's especially bad when you're the biggest, the queen hissed. When you're big and strong, you shouldn't bully just because you can. You should help just because you can. Yeah, yeah, enough with the lecture, the wolf said. Now hop down here so I can rearrange your whiskers, sister. Growling, the lion queen leapt from the tree and thudded to the ground in front of Scout. The little wolf looked at his shadow, still stretching large. And then he saw the queen's. Her shadow was so huge, it was like a dark storm cloud. Her shadow was so huge, it stretched from her mighty paws and hungry muzzle all the way into the trees where it blended in with the gloom of the forest. Her shadow was so huge that it swallowed his shadow up entirely and seemed to drink in the sun. Only then did the little wolf realize his mistake. He looked up at the lioness, who still towered over him with terror. She raised one of her giant paws, her claws gleaming in the twilight. Scout closed his eyes and cringed. He knew what was coming. She was the biggest, she was the baddest, and now she was going to squish him. Scout waited for the crushing paw, and waited, and waited. Finally, he opened one eye and peeked out. The queen stood before him, looming down, and then she lowered her paw. What, you aren't gonna smush me? He asked, confused. I would have smushed you. The lioness shook her queenly head. And that's why I'm the queen. And you are not, she said. A leader recognizes what their followers need. And while I think bonking you on the head would make me feel better, it wouldn't help. Oh, it's true, old puppy, you've annoyed me. I'd love to bonk you on the head, I'd do so joyfully. But this is a chance for you to learn and grow For your heart to expand like your shadow Wolf puppy Learn from me
Scout wagged his tail slowly, understanding he wasn't going to get smushed by the queen's enormous paw after all. Thank you, he said, even though it was hard for him. And the next words were harder still. They seemed to stick in his throat like an old bird bone, prodding and poking, but finally he got them out. I'm sorry for what I said. The queen smiled. Maybe there's hope for you after all. Now run along home and think about how lucky you were today. Scout bowed and then turned and ran, heading back to his den. The sun was gone now, so he didn't have a shadow, giant or otherwise, to accompany him, but he still felt good. At one point, a little rabbit ran across his path. Normally, he would have yelled at it, berated it for being lazy, or at the very least, eaten it up for dinner. However, the queen's mercy was still too fresh in his mind, and he found he wasn't much interested in being mean at the moment. Oh, said the rabbit, please don't eat me. I'm just trying to find my way home. Scout smiled, which showed so many pointy teeth, the rabbit nearly fainted. Relax, twerp. I mean, uh, friend, he said, old habits getting the better of him for a moment. The woods are back that way. You'll find the burrow if you follow this trail straight through. Oh, um, okay, the rabbit said. She hopped a little down the trail and then stopped and turned, calling over her shoulder. Thanks for not eating me. You're welcome, Scout called back, feeling a strange warmth inside his heart. I hope you find your way back. The little wolf stood there for a bit tail swaying, yellow eyes looking up at the rising moon. I hope we all do, he whispered, and then headed home. And while he didn't become a sweet wolf overnight, he worked at it, day by day. And if he still wasn't the kindest animal in the forest, well, at least he wasn't the meanest. The End Thanks for listening.